He has unbolted the struck bar, breaking loose his boost sensor. What did you do? So he just took the bolt out of here so far? The bolt out of there and the two bolts on each side. Two bolts on top are loose. Um, oh, okay. Oh, I see. There's two bolts down here. I thought he took the top off. So now we got all the room back here to get down in there. Scratch that. Back up. What? This OEM Volvo heat shield is covering up the spoolie boy in there. Oh. It's just held on by two bolts. One has a spring on it for some reason. I don't know why. Back right there. It's like an exhaust bolt. And the other one's over here somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Might be out of luck here. Oh. Oh. Got some magnetization. Oh, look at that. Came right loose. Lucky man. The other thing. That's one thing. If you're lucky, lucky about this, this thing looks so crusty, but everything's coming apart kind of nice so far. Is yeah. we don't know when this catless downpipe was put in. Um, it's it's pretty rusty, so I don't think it's any time recently, and I don't think the guy I got it from put it in. But we only had it for like six months, right? Yeah. Breaks, it breaks. Oh, you don't want to squirt it with something? Sounds like you're getting it. Oh, there it goes. Broke it. There we go. Ta-da! Now we got the exposure we need. That's quite. quite These bolts don't look too there. bad. They look actually pretty clean. Yeah. We'll definitely spray with some stuff to make sure they come off. Got to get that oxygen sensor off so we can swap it. And then we'll go up on the lift to get the rest of it once we break this loose. So in order to get the some of it out, we've got to release it from the insulators. It's all on this bracket here. So four bolts on each corner, and then this will come down. We'll have to wiggle it out of the insulators here in a minute. Oh, look at that! Didn't even. <laughs> They're just sitting in there. So we have said cat pipe ready to install once we get this out, but some genius decided to weld a $800 catless pipe straight onto a resonator deleted exhaust. And now we need to get a flange to make said pipes work together in harmony, but we can't get one till Monday because it's a little too late on a Saturday. Nobody wants to get it. So we're gonna have a bit of a challenge here. Um, so we're debating what our process here is, whether we're gonna just cut and do the same thing and weld it to the pipe, or if we, we don't even know yet, but dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. What does Nate think about this process? Ah, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just evolved for you. There we go, yeah. <laughs> Upon further inspection, we are debate. we figured out what we're gonna do. So he's gonna do cat back exhaust eventually on this anyway. So what we're gonna do to make everything work, we're gonna cut this off here and then grind that down for later use so that the flange is usable. And we're gonna cut the flange off of this cat pipe so that we can slide that pipe all the way into this section so where we can actually put a clamp on it and it'll be easily removable later. Because we're gonna need some a little extra length because it's gonna be too short. So we'll show you how we do it. And here he goes with, oh yeah, Kimball Blades. Yo brothers, if you know anything about this channel and follow our exhaust videos, you know what we're doing now. Let me go to the back and let's listen to this bad boy with no exhaust. <laughs> that turbo's singing. Nah, it's just because he sprayed the bolts with some degree or uh, you know penetrating oil. What do you guys think about that? Let me know what you think in the comments. Should he keep it open or close it? I think he should keep it open. Honestly, things sounds pretty mean. And we're back with the Volvo. All right, it's a three bolt flange from the turbo to the downpipe. We got two of them off. They are right there. Bango. Now we go back up. Okay, so you got two from the top. Now we're two going from up. The top. Last one is super easy. You get from the bottom. Her right home. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, he's all up in there. What are you touching right now? This is the O2 sensor. Oh, he's unplugging the O2 sensor. There's a red tab on top of the plug there. 
and it has to slide out of the connector. Oh, I see. And then once that slides out, then the plug will come apart. And if you get a reference of where this is sitting, subframe's right here, up in behind on the back side of the transmission there. Wrestling, wrestling. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, baby. And here's the other flange bolt. Simple process right here. And you could get that one from the bottom, or for, yeah, from the bottom as well, but it was just easier to get up top since it is right in front of you. And that yeah. burp smells, dude. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he didn't even touch it, he ripped on it. Oops, stud and all. Oh, that's kind of good. Diving right in. Can you hand me that little, that one? Yep. There we go. And then my Look at that. I don't even know where he is right now. I know he's behind those heater core lines, that's it. He's all up in there. Getting the oxygen sensor wire out, right? Yes. Okay, so if you guys aren't familiar, actually, it's kind of like a catch like that you have a clip and then it actually unhinges. It's got a little hinge, it's got a little door on it, and then as you're opening it, it pulls the plug off and then it all comes apart. And the other problem we just ran into is taking the plug out from under the charge pipe. Or sorry, that's a, yeah, that is a charge pipe. Because the plug is too big because this is so close to the charge pipe. But there you go. Oh. He had to go like all the way down to the bottom next to the turbo, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, and get around get around this side of it here. It's under the lip of the head. Under the lip of the head? Okay, yeah, so you can feel it under here, and then there's enough space. Okay, yeah, I see what he's talking about. Yep, so that's how you get the oxygen sensor out. Now we are completely free of the cat pipe, and we can take it on out once we get back up. Removal time. <laughs> Hold this up out of the way for you. There you go. So as I get it off the flange of the turbo first, and then it just slides on out. Well, that's got just some, make sure you don't blow your wires apart and pull them on. It. It's over. Oh, there you go. Sweet. So now we can see the comparison. This is $130, by the way. With uh, regular, they're like $123 four. $123 ship. <laughs> Shipped? What? eBay special. Dude. I it came from camera. Well, Mate just made a very valid point. Now that we have the exhaust off, we gotta feel the shaft play. It's no, it's a, it's a common trial. Hold on, I gotta get up in the back here. Oh, that turbo's wasted. Is it a little sloppy? His hand's moving a lot, guys. No, really? That does look it's pretty sloppy. It doesn't have any in and out. Hmm, just up and down. Just up and down. Ooh, I mean, oh, I can hear, hear that. Hear, hear, real hear. quiet, listen. Yikes. That's not good, boys. Well. Sounds like my, my grandma's dentures. <laughs> Upgraded turbo? So it sounds like we're putting a bigger turbo on this thing. Oh. I've been about three months. Yo, Nate was, <laughs> Nate's taking out his parts and checking his hardware. <laughs> so this is the, this is the original gasket that came off the car. You know, circle, three bolts. What's missing from this other one, guys? Dude, somebody got hungry and chewed an ear off, man. I guess that's what you get for eBay special. <laughs> yeah, for 120 bucks. Oh, dude, that sucks. Hopefully, I think that steel one should still work, huh? Yeah, that'll work. We'll just slob some. Yeah, put some extra cheese on that taco. Don't roll with it. <laughs> oh. Ooh, did you slip off or did you break it loose? Oh, he got it. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's time to cut said flange off so we can make this work right. Get after it, brother. <laughs> All right, boys, going in with the new cap pipe. You can see uh, we put a little of that red RTV on there. That's that high temp because the gasket that came with it, you saw no ear, so we're making sure that this one seals up and we don't have any leaks. So we put a little bit of that stuff on there. It's good stuff. We use that anytime there is a questionable exhaust setup, flange, gasket situation. Washers. And he's getting washers for his stud to make it all function properly. Stud. And then we just gotta slip this exhaust back here. We're gonna have to do a little trickery. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. Early. So Ari, what you doing? It sounds like, it looks like you're in a bit of a sticky wicket. Yeah, I'm currently holding the cat pipe in this direction so it stays Flat to the flange so he can start the nuts. And so, so my head and my hands are. So trying. Nate has the nuts and you got the pipe. Yup. It sounds like a gay bar. 
<laughs> it might be. We're ready to make our, our fitment here. So obviously we have some face to make up. Uh, we're gonna cut it back to the two and a quarter, two half, two and a half inch section so that we can make this pipe fit onto there and there. And if you're trying to cut pipe and make it completely straight, this pipe cutter that Nate it's has. It's the tits. It's, it's the tits, boys it's and girls. Tits. It's actually really nice because you basically, it has these little wheels all the way around the edges that are really sharp and you clamp it just like a pair of pliers and you just keep running it back and forth along the whole thing until it finally cuts it off. You just gotta have somebody hold it still while you cut it. The only bad part about those things is that the wheels wear out kind of quick, although I have used it a lot on exhaust. So that one's junk. So we're gonna throw the Sawzall on this bad boy since we got a nice groove and a nice line to follow and get it nice and straight. Dude, he got it out with a pair of needle nose once we cut it a little Heart bit. Heartbreaking though. Mm-hmm. So now we just gotta hammer this back because we bent it a little bit. Yeah. All right, we got the pipe in, the new one. Slid right in once we fix the flanger. Now we gotta put it up where it's supposed to go here and you see how much longer that pipe is. So we have to come to about here with the pipe so that we can get a good clamp here and we're gonna get a fine clamp there and make it work. Okay. There's our line, so we'll be able to slip it right in. I'll show you here in a minute. Dude. You couldn't Mom. make that happen again if you wanted to. Ah, oh, I wish I recorded That's that. Like Literally the pipe fell on the ground and landed like that. That's Didn't touch it. Nobody touched it. Like nobody else. <laughs> Wait, that right there. Oh, oh, look at that. Perfect lineup. So now that we got everything where we want it, oh, sure that's other than that, yeah, we're going to get this all the way in. We're going to mark everything so we know where it's going to sit. And then we're going to take it out, weld it all the way on that, and then slip this joint this in, far enough in to once we get it in there. Yeah. Hang it on that. Yeah. I think it was just beautiful. It was butter, man. I love love with new with new metal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I think it was good. I think it's golden. Think it splendid. Splendid, I say. Even the Tony agrees. Look, it's a family agreement. Wow, that's a. I can't believe it. Doesn't but... happen often, guys. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, we got this bad boy sitting pretty. An issue we were having is the oxygen sensor over here was actually touching the heat shield on the wall. So when we went to clamp this together, we had said pry bar in Fritz's hand against the drive shaft, unfortunately, you know. But we weren't ripping on it too hard. Just enough to move the pipe over so that when we actually tightened up this clamp, it moved the whole exhaust over where we wanted it to, and now it's clearing the oxygen sensor. So we are home free, boys, and this is actually pretty much a done deal other than the insulator and the, the strap that has to go across here. And I got a surprise for you guys. We got our little buddy outside. He wants to get fed. If you ever question what a peacock should be eating or wants to eat, Rachel Ray, watch out. <laughs> I think Corlin's trying to pet Petey. Petey's not about it though. <laughs> he just wants his cat food. So uh, one of the issues that we're having with his stuff here is, where's the flashlight? His isolators for the tr for the exhaust are just up there sloppy, hanging around. There's no, there's no like strap. Yeah, there's no actual holder. So in order to hold them still, he's putting self-tappers in the holes that are already in this plate and then going through the isolator to hold onto it. Pretty crafty, Nate, pretty crafty. Thank you. That's not going anywhere. Yeah. Oh, cool. neat. That's like neat. And we are officially done on the bottom, so he is putting on a splash guard. Oh, splash guard, official. Amazon splash guard. Inserted, assembled. It was a little big. Yeah, it took some maneuvering to get it all on there, but she looks stock. Yeah. Looks legit. Looks I can't good, tell actually. the difference. It actually does look nice. Now he's currently running the last piece of the pie here. Just pizza gotta pie. sneak that, yeah, pizza pie, man, pizza pie. Just gotta sneak that wire back to the same place you got it fed through, and then plug it into, where was it, behind the heater cord, like all the way down there? Yeah, you can't Somewhere. see it. 
It's down there somewhere, boys, if you're looking down there, and ladies. Yo, time to fire this baby up. Ooh, time to fire it up. See how much quieter it is now. <laughs> yeah, dude. And then what is it? Four pistons or six pistons? Four pistons. Huh? Four piston promos. 